Hello and welcome to this tutorial. In this tutorial we will go through how to connect an external solver from OpenCosan. As a prerequisite to this tutorial, you should have already watched the video on how to call an external solver from the graphical user interface, because we will see some parallel between what we do in the GUI and what we need to be do to be done in OpenCosan. Additionally, you should have already downloaded the file ishigamisolver.zip and extracted in your preferred working folder. Let's move to MATLAB. As you can see, I have already prepared in my working folder the, Ishi the, and the, the Ishigami Solver.zip and extracted in Ishigami Solver folder. First of all, let's start by initializing OpenCosan. So let's go to your open cost installation folder and let's call initialize. Let's now move back to the working folder. We need to create a new script. Tutorial. Let's call it for example tutorial external solver. First, we need to design the input quantities. We know that in this problem, we have to, to have five input quantities, three random variables, and two parameters. The random variables are uniform, distributed, with lower bound pi and upper bound minus pi. Random variable, property, as distribution, Normal lower bound minus pi and upper bound pi are between RB3 three are identical. So we just copy paste. Cosan random variables must go in the random variable set also when they are uncorrelated. So in this, in this case, we need to create a random variable set that collects these three random variables with no correlation. XLB set, random variable set, pass them in CXRV, the cell array containing these three objects XLB1, XLB2, and XLB3. And then we specify their names inside Cosan with the property C members. That is a set array of strings XLB1, XLB2, and XLB3. Now we need to define the parameters object. It's parameter A. Parameter object with value 7 and parameter B parameter with value 0 0.1. We create an input object by passing this object we have created. In, we pass the object with the property CX members. Cell array that collects XRP set. Parameter A. And parameter B. Pass the names of the objects inside Cosm with CS members. So array of strings, XRB set, parameter A, and parameter B. Now 
This controls the input part. Now we actually do the connection to the third party solver. So in order to do this connection, we need to, as I've done before in the uh, GUI, we need to have uh, three things. First of all, we need to have an external solver and have the instruction on how to call the external solver. Then we need to have one or more input files that we have to write to it, and then one or more output files we want to read from them. So, for the input files, we need to create, first of all, a template file that specifies the points where open cosine needs to go and insert the sampled value for each different analysis. Now, to create an input file like this, template file, we need to insert a XML-like tag. For example, in this file I already started modifying before. You need to practically, let's move to the next one, and we need to insert an XML-like tag with custom, then specify name, and in quotes insert the name of the quantity we want to insert as defined inside open custom, for example, parameter B, and the format we want to write it, percentage 14.7E, for example, and then the original value. And then we close the tag with slash greater than, like this. Now, as you can see, we already have a file called input.coson that contains all the injection points, so we don't need to, con to do it again. But when you do it yourself, you need to insert all the quantities you want to write in this way. Once we have the, in the .coson file, the template, the injection template files, we can actually create the object that does this connection. It is the, this object is the injector object. It's an injector. And the constructor of the objects requires two things. First is the name of the file with the template, so the file that contains all the uh, COSAN uh, XML tags. And the second input is how the file should be named for each analysis when you insert the sampled values. So the file to be uh, scanned is passed by the property as scan file name. And this is relative to the working folder. So in this case, it's Ishikami Solver. And then backward slash. Ishigami function dot exe. Now, if you're in Linux, you don't need a dot exe because the executable has no extension. And then we have to specify the name of the file, an S file, and this is the name of the file after the insertion of the new values. So, S file input dot dot. We call it input dot dot. In a second step, we need to define then the output file and which quantities has to be read from such a file. This is done by defining the anchor point. Now, to define the quantity that has to be read, we have an object called response. So, response. First of all, we have to define the anchor point, and this is done with the property C lookout for. This property specifies which string should be searched. So, custom will go and looking out for the strings specified in this property. In this case, we only have one string to be found, this result. We can have multiple anchor, one relative to the other. So, if we would have two strings in zero count four, first the first string would, uh, will be found, and then the second string relative to the first one, and so on. Then we have to specify 
from the anchor point how many rows and how many columns we have to skip to find the quantity we want to read. So in this case, say one row down, so end of row, one, and then start reading from the column where we are and call one. Finally, we have to say what is the format of what we want to read with S format. Say, for example, percentage 10E, saying that we want to say read 10 numbers in the E format. And then we have to specify what is the name of the quantity we are reading. S name, let's call it out. Then we need to have an object that says which file contains this response. This is done with the object called extractor. An extractor we just have to say which file contains the responses. So in this case S file, then result.out, and then which responses should be read from this file. I will use the property X response. And we pass xres. Now, if you would have had more than one response connected to a file, we could have used the cx response and then pass a cell array of responses object. Finally, we need to specify a connector. A connector is an object that contains both the settings on how to call an external solver as well as which file should be run to run the external analysis. So, xcon is connector. First of all, we need to specify which file should be run, and this is the solver, the external solver. This is specified in the property s solver binary. And here we have to pass the full path to the solver. The path is the directory where the solver is located. Slash the name of the solver function exe. Then we need to pass the instruction to open cosine of how to assemble the execution command. This is in the property s x c m t. As was shown in the GUI, we need to put some tags, some placeholders where we extract cosine to where to insert the solver binary, where to, to insert the execution commands, where to insert the main input file, where, and when, where to insert the execution flags. So, it's done with the percentage and then the name of the property you want to insert. So, for example, here we want to just have solver binary and main input file in order to call the external solver. So, we just put percentage s solver binary. And then the main input file, percentage as main input file. We now need to specify what is the uh, file that needs to be called to execute the external solver. So this is the main input file and also the location where to find this main input file. That is also going to be where all the files uh, uh, that are specified in Jetman Extractor are taken as starting uh, execution, starting path of the uh, solver. So this is S main input path. It is the path where we are working at the moment. And then the main input file. And this is going to be the file that needs to be called by the solver, that is input.dat. Finally, we need to say which uh, we need to pass the object that will do the injection and the extraction. So this is with the CX members. And we pass two objects, xinj and xx. And 
verify we can do a test to see if everything is created correctly. Set to run it. Uh, okay. Oh, I made a mistake. These are not normal. These are uniform. Sorry. Sorry for that. Uh, I made the misspelling here. Members. Sorry. Never misspelling. It's injector. Okay. Now you see that we tested the input of that file has been created in the main working folder, and this is the uh, I made a mistake. Oh yes, I didn't. I gave the wrong path here. It's Ishigami. It's not Ishigami. I don't have to pass the. Sorry about that. Is the is the file with the template. So input of that question. Sorry. Okay. Check again. Yes, now it has created the file with the original values correctly. And all the injector and extractor are ready to be used and code. Now In order to run analysis, we need first to create a model. But to do this, we need first to create an evaluator. Evaluator is going to collect all the black box solvers. So, see, we just create an evaluator with CX members. In this case, we only have a connector, so XCon. And with the name. CS members XCOM. Finally, we create the model by putting together an evaluator and an input. Test the model with deterministic analysis. Let's try to run. So we have the error. We can. The analysis failed. As you can see one new analysis was created, but the, it was not correctly done. So it's debug. It's calling Ishigami function of text, we pass an input of that. Let's see if the input file is correctly created. Yes. So I probably have mistyped something. Way to debug it's to try getting this command and run it to in the in a, in a command line window. So let's see.
I have ah, between the mistake before I have oh, I have ruined I have uh, ruined the uh, solver so the solver can end by using this the by making the definition of the injector wrong I made a mistake and destroyed the solver sorry let's try again yeah I shouldn't have because the injector modifies the input files, so I ruined the input, the solver, sorry about that. So as you can see now, by repristinating, uh, recruiting back the correct solver, it's working. Uh, yes, so we have done one analysis. And now, if you look at the contents of the analysis output, uh, you can see that the output is zero. Now, to make something more meaningful, let's try to do a Monte Carlo with it. For example, 10 samples, and then xoutmc, xmc dot apply x model. And now you can see that 10 simulation folder have appeared. Each folder containing a new, a new input file and a new output file for each sample. And if you look at the value of the output, for example, etc. dot get values, and then the name of the output, so s name out, and these are the output of these ten Monte Carlo analysis. This concludes this tutorial. Thank you for watching.